Anyway, let's get into this Kurzgesagt video, guys. One of the greatest illusions in life is continuity. 66 million years ago, the continuity of the dinosaurs had been going on for around 165 million years already, and it didn't seem this would change anytime soon. The world was warm and pleasant, and most of the land was covered with lush forests and an incredible diversity of trees, flowers, ferns. Dinosaurs were ubiquitous and had diversified into hundreds of species of all shapes and sizes. Titanotaurs. I'm just going to sing the Jurassic Park theme to you guys. Large, gentle giants shared the world with famous beasts like Tyrannosaurus rex or Edmontosaurus. Pectinodon hunted in the undergrowth while Edmontosaurus wandered coastlines and swamps. An ancient paradise, a world of plenty, full of life. 66 million years ago, maybe on a Tuesday afternoon, life was the same as it had been the day before, or a thousand years before, or pretty much a million years. How beautiful is this video? The animation is like flawless. Is before. Things were good for our feathered dinosaur buddies until a tiny, tiny detail in the sky changed. It wasn't it the size of like Nelly Texas or something? How big was the dino asteroid? And did you guys see the news recently? There was actually not just one dino asteroid, but it looks like there was probably two. That was maybe a few months ago. About 10 kilo. Okay. Sorry, not Texas. Uh, it's like a Austin, I believe. That is a big rock. If there were dinosaurs watching the stars, one night they may have noticed the appearance of a new star, a tiny dot that for many weeks slowly became bigger and brighter. Until one fateful day, it looked like another small moon in the night sky. And then it faded from sight as it dipped into Earth's shadow. For a few more hours, the illusion of continuity was upheld until it was not anymore. In the morning, the object suddenly appears again. Now, almost as large as the sun in the sky and growing every moment, heading for the coast near the Yucatan Peninsula. It takes- This is a big problem. <laughs> if asteroids and things come from the direction of the sun, why? Because they're kind of invisible to us currently. If asteroids and that large giant comets and things come from this, you know, in the sunlight, we're kind of stuffed currently, so we're trying to come up with ways of actually detecting them. And NASA is constantly, you know, trying to let people know, like, this is actually a problem. We need to... Why do you think they launched that dart recently that, you know, actually was successful at slightly diverting that friggin' asteroid? So, that, so that's great news. We could talk about dart, actually, but we'll keep watching. It takes the asteroid only seconds to pass through the thin layer between space and the ground to make contact. As it enters the atmosphere at almost 60 times the speed of sound. Let's stop time. Here, we see the unnamed asteroid about to commit speciesite. Larger than Mount Everest, it reaches from the ocean high into the atmosphere. Higher than passenger planes. Triple kill. <laughs> What's the other Halo medals? Like, extinction. This would fly millions of years later. At this moment, the world was one way. In a fraction of a second, it would be fundamentally different. Let's make the transition. As the asteroid hits the shallow ocean... Yeah, I get it. Like, it's sad, guys. But if this didn't happen, you wouldn't be here today, right? So that's kind of the funny thing about life. Bad things happen. And then, in retrospect, you're kind of glad those bad things happen, right? And the bedrock below, the energy of billions of nuclear weapons is released all at once as the asteroid vaporizes. So hang on. So he has actually gotten something wrong here, which is, you know, usually Kurzgesagt is like 99.9% .9 correct, just so you guys know that you can trust this stuff. But uh, actually, so what would have happened, right? So if we come back here, before this thing freaking hit, so this thing was moving, like you said. It was moving it. About 18 kilometers per second. That was close. Four, 40,000 miles per hour this thing was, these things generally come at us at, right? So that's freaking quick. So what happens at this speed, right? So before this thing even hits the ground, there's catastrophic destruction. So this, this visual is 
catastrophically wrong. What would happen? This asteroid, as soon as it hits the atmosphere, right? Because before the atmosphere, particles are very sparse, sparse in space, right? Very, 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 very spread out. As you get to the thicker parts of the atmosphere, which is actually like quite far out, there's way more particles. And so what happens is it starts to run into stuff. And at that speed, it's like running into concrete. You might ha know that if you jump into water from a very high height, what, what happens, right? You, everyone knows that it's like hitting concrete and you don't want to jump from too high unless you disperse the water before you land. So this asteroid would have hit the atmosphere and that would have sent energy around the world, right? That would have sent shock waves around the world multiple times. There's studies coming out suge <coughs> suggesting that this thing actually might have liquefied some of the crust like the and you know the so some of the mantle might have been exposed that's how intense it might have been before this thing even landed and so this visual you can see now how kind of wrong this is these things are just flying around this thing's over there and not only that we could talk about uh like uh uh kinetic death so when something's traveling with more kinetic energy and it hits uh something it just explodes we'll come back to that later uh, let's keep watching for now as the asteroid hits the shallow ocean and the bedrock below, the energy of billions of nuclear weapons is released all at once as the asteroid vaporizes. There's like billions of nuclear weapons worth of energy um, being generated on the surface of the sun like every, every second, I believe. So just to give you guys some perspective. A flash of light illuminates the sky as an eerie bright white sphere grows over the Gulf of Mexico. Bedrock melts into seething hot plasma at tens of thousands of degrees Celsius. The thermal radiation from the explosion travels at the speed of light and immediately burns everything within a radius of about 1,500 kilometers, while the energy from the impact pushes so hard against Earth's crust that it loses all strength and flows away from the impact site like a liquid. That's so cool. Look at that. Creating a hole 25 kilometers deep and 100 kilometers. So you guys should also know, right? So he's suggesting that it doesn't go down to the mantle. You got to remember this stuff, right? Happened 65 million years ago. So all we can do is use science and indirect methods to know what actually happened. So you will have different sources and different, you know, things saying different things, and there will be a consensus, right? So this might actually be the consensus. And what I was telling you was just some paper that was published that it got, you know, popped off because it sounded crazy in PopSci, right? I am not deep in this area of science right so i can just tell you some fun things that might or might not be true but i can say that they were being published in science right so and just keep in mind that you know a lot of the facts surrounding this event aren't known like for instance we just found out there was a second asteroid that accompanied like <laughs> you know we only just discovered that crazy kilometers wide the ocean is pushed back for hundreds of kilometers like when a kid jumps into a puddle as the crust bounces back, melted and flowing crust forms a temporary mountain stretching 10 kilometers into the sky. An incredible amount of material is blasted into the high atmosphere or even out into space as much as 60 times the original mass of the asteroid. The violence of the strike is felt everywhere on Earth within minutes. A magnitude 11 earthquake may be the most powerful quake any living thing has ever witnessed in billions of years. Magnitude 11? <laughs> I thought it can't go over 10. We're in a log scale here. Yes. It is so insanely strong that in India, it might have shaken gigantic lava fields and causes volcanic eruptions that would last for 30,000 years and cover half of the Indian subcontinent with lava. Even on the side of Earth opposite the... Sorry, my Indian friends, rip. Uh, so someone asked, any news about KelvyPN? Actually, before we end this Kurzweil video, Checkers, include this bit. Um, so, update on KelvyPN. It's broken. It doesn't work. <laughs> kidding. It, everything's going really well. So, uh, like I said in the last stream, but if you missed it, I'm creating this new kind of VPN. It's not like other VPNs, right? It's called a post-quantum VPN. It has things in it called post-quantum cryptographic algorithms. And they theoretically can protect you guys from quantum computers. How? It has these really difficult mathematical problems within the encryption. Updates for everyone who had like watches regularly. 
Um, everything is basically ready. We're just doing all these last checks, you know, fixing some bugs. Uh, so the Windows, the beta will be out next week. And if you're new around here, you can actually use it for free right now. The alpha is out. So if you go to the website, kelvpn.com, probably in my, in my bio, uh, you can download it, use a free VPN. I'll give you a sneak peek. This is like brand new. This is going to be really important going forward because quantum computers are right around the corner. They already exist. I mean, the useful quantum computers are right around the corner. And this thing, if you turn it on, like can literally protect your data. And you might be wondering why the hell would this be important? Well, just consider and like do your research, right? Because if you don't know anything about this stuff, you're going to be like, oh, this sounds like dodgy. This stuff is plastered over every, like all over the place. So you can find very reputable sources. You can type in NIST post quantum and you can have a read. They recommend everyone starts to use these things. If you sign up for the beta when it comes out, you get a free month of it. And then if you use the VPN, uh, like it will support me and the channel, right? And I'll be able to make these streams and videos more. So that's just a, a way you can support me and actually get something, right? If you just pay for my membership, I guess you, you are supporting my channel, but you don't, you just get my support, right? But here's a way you guys can actually get something out of it as well. And it's kind of useful. And I, that's what I forgot to mention. This is going to be useful because quantum computers, what they're probably going to be able to do is uh, retroactively decipher things. What does that mean? So like hackers could be stealing data right now. I could literally steal some of your guys' data. Let's choose someone. Romeo. It's, it's doomsday for Romeo. Croc guy now. What we could do is even if he had a VPN, VPN on right now, VPNs just encrypt your data, right? We could hack Romeo and steal his VPN encrypted data. And with a quantum computer using Shaw's algorithm, we could decrypt it and very easily. Uh, and then I could read whatever he's sending, his bank details, absolutely everything of Romeo. Romeo is f***ed. And not only that, we could do that for as long as we've been stealing data. So what I'm saying is like people, hackers, governments, USA, China, they could be stealing data right now to you know decrypt in the future. So that's that. It's probably... You know, a good idea to start using it soon. Anyway. Impact, the ground still moved by several meters. Nobody would sleep through this day. The Jesus gigantic Christ. explosion crashes against the atmosphere with unprecedented violence and causes a shockwave that reaches speeds of more than 1,000 kilometers per hour near the site of impact, similar to the hyper hurricanes on gas giants like Neptune. In middle America, basically any soil, vegetation, or animal is just shredded into pieces and catapulted thousands of kilometers away. Now, the previously displaced oceans return. As the temporary mountain at the site of impact collapses, a ring of tsunamis as high as one kilometer, enough to cover all skyscrapers humans would ever build, heads in all directions. As they crash into the coasts of the continents surrounding the impact, they will drown thousands of kilometers of coastline. 15 hours later, some of the waves that get refracted around South America will still tower as much as 100 meters into the sky. But we still haven't talked about the worst thing yet. A lot of the debris yeeted into space will orbit Earth for thousands of years. Some may hit the moon or even Mars. But most of it comes right back. When things fall through the atmosphere at such speeds, they get very hot, as in hundreds of degrees hot. And this happens to millions of tons of material everywhere. This rapidly heats up the atmosphere to insane temperatures. We don't know exactly how hot it got or how long this heat shock lasted, but there are two ideas here. Either the air was heated to hundreds of degrees for a few minutes, or to thousands of degrees for around one minute. In any case, the air became as hot as the inside of an industrial oven. How bad the global effects of this were is contested, but if enough heat reached the surface, a lot of plants and animals would have died very quickly if they couldn't bury themselves or escape into caves. The heat, together with raining debris, also may have ignited material on forest floors and sparked wildfires as the earth rotated under the searing hot plume. In a few hours, those massive damn wildfires, wildfires were probably burning around. Those damn wildfires in Australia, my friends. You've probably seen the news. I think it catches the international media sometimes, but we get them bad down here in Australia, particularly in my state, Victoria, where I live, Melbourne. And I actually live on the rural urban fringe in Melbourne. So, like, I don't think it matters. I live in Pakenham, right, uh, which is like an hour from the city. And so when there's bushfires, 
they're like 15 minutes drive. Like when there's big bushfires sometimes, they're like right there. They're huge and I can see it and it looks like the apocalypse on the horizon. I'm not even kidding. Like the the smoke goes everywhere. Like it looks like the apocalypse. And uh, you can actually even see like some of the flames sometimes and it's scary. Anyway, let's get back to it. And the globe. Some of them may have lasted for months and turned Earth into a horrifying, hot, hellish version of itself. As the day of the impact draws to an end, many of the dinosaurs are already dead, but the worst is still to come. The gigantic plume of vaporized material reaches the upper atmosphere and spreads around the whole globe. Together with the soot from the burning planet and the aerosols generated at impact, the planet sinks into a deep darkness with only the remaining raging fires illuminating the scenery. Whatever plants survive the firestorms will now... So if you're wondering how we learn these things, like if you're wondering how the fuck do they know <laughs> what happened after it hit, you know, you have a good point. But there is such a thing as computer simulations, and we can simulate some things these days with our large computers, uh, like the atmosphere, you can try to. Obviously, you have to generalize, right? Because there's so many particles in the atmosphere, you can't perfectly simulate it. Nor can you simulate, like, the actual quantum physics yet. In the future, you might be able to with quantum computers, right? That's what, that's one of the big things about them. They can actually simulate, like, reality in a sense. I'll be starved for sunlight as global photosynthesis is temporarily shut down. Within days, temperatures crash as much as 25 degrees Celsius. The oceans were especially hard hit. The lack of sunlight killed over 90% of plankton, which formed the basis of the food web of marine life. Ultimately, this would kill off the large marine reptiles and ammonites that used to dominate the seas. The biosphere the survivors now find themselves in is like an alien landscape. Ash, debris, and the burned remains of the formerly lush and blooming life cover the ground. The sky is dark and it's cold and fresh food is scarce while fungi thrive. For months and years, the planet will be a hostile and deadly place. The sudden global winter will last for decades. At least 75% of all species on Earth will just vanish from existence. And so, as the day ends, the world is suddenly different. The continuity that went on for millions of years is no more. The era of the dinosaurs is over. Just like that. That's a cool visual. Eventually, from the ashes of the old world, survivors emerged. Birds that are the direct descendants of the dinosaurs and mammals that would eventually become the dominant animals on the planet. Without the asteroid, who knows what life on Earth... That's right, your distant ancestors, this little rat thing. So you've got some rat in you, everyone. Look like today. So it wasn't a rat, right? It was like a little little marsupial... Not marsupial. A little mammal. But anyway, let's get back to this, this video, eh? Good evening from Paris. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Dylan. Fume la bouche. Drame Is that how you say it? Shut your mouth in French? Shut your mouth. Ferme ta bouche. Without the sudden disruption of dinosaur continuity that completely changed the planet and all life on it, we might have never had the opportunity to become what we are today. It's not clear how long the human era will last. So far, modern humans have been around for 0.1% of the time the dinosaurs were. And in this short amount of time, we've achieved impressive feats, from making the world our own, to reaching space and splitting the atom. Yet, our future and our long-term survival are not a given. If we're not careful, it could end in an instant, like the age of the dinosaurs ended. But in contrast to them, we know that our continuity is fragile, even if it doesn't feel like it. We can be prepared and be vigilant and hopeful. If we're lucky, our journey will go on for a long, long time. Gotta love the end of Kurt's exact videos. They're always so positive and just bright. They just make me so happy. Um, so another great video by Kurt's exact. So we'll leave that one there.